This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. South Carolina is undefeated entering the 2024 Women's College Basketball Tournament, trying to cruise to the tournament victory. But there are some fun challengers in their way, including Caitlin Clark and Iowa LSU trying to repeat. We're going to break down the women's bracket for today by talking to Justin Carter for Hoop Stats and Rotor Baller, getting his read on this year's field, whether he wants to bet on South Carolina, maybe consider the field at plus 115, that very tough region with Iowa and LSU in it. And and much more. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here by Justin Carter. You can find Justin on Twitter at J or Just Carts. You can check out his work at her hoop stats and at Roto Baller as well. Full breakdown of the women's tournament up at Roto Baller right now. Justin, I appreciate the time. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. You bet. We had you on last year breaking down the final four. That was when the Caitlin Clark buzz was kind of reaching its uh, its first peak, I would say. But then it seems like this year it's gotten to a whole new level. And it seems like the interest in general around this sport has been at an all time high. And I feel like for you, as someone who's been entrenched in this for a while, that's got to be kind of fun to see people slowly trickling over to this sport that you have so much knowledge about. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I actually moved to Iowa a couple of years ago, and it's been crazy being here. Yeah, um, just seeing the Caitlin Clark Zenith. Um, I was at an antique mall, and they have like bobbleheads of her selling for like two hundred bucks right now and oh, wow. stuff. It's just like I might need to add to my collection then. That. You know, I gotta gotta add to my collection somewhere to get it, to get a Caitlin Clark uh, bobblehead up there somewhere. <laughs> We're gonna talk about Caitlin Clark and the very tough path that she and Iowa have. For this year's tournament, we'll break down whether South Carolina is a value despite being minus 145 to win this year's event and much more. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We broke down the men's bracket on yesterday's show by talking to Dr. Ed Fang and Bennett Corcoran, getting their read on this year's field, who they like in the Final Four, their national championship. Uh, national champion pool strategy and much more you can find that in the covering the spread podcast feed the FanDuel youtube page and FanDuel tv plus as well more shows coming up later on this week breaking down the thursday and friday games so get those by subscribing to covering the spread if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game on the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Must be 21 plus in president select states fan duel is offering online sports wagering in kansas under an agreement with kansas star casino llc first online real money wager only ten dollar first deposit required bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg in colorado iowa michigan new jersey ohio pennsylvania illinois kentucky tennessee virginia north carolina and Vermont. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 789 7777. Where's the slash chat in Connecticut? 1 809 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522. 4700 visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Justin, let's begin things here by talking about South Carolina minus 145 to win the women's tournament for this year, which is a bananas number, obviously, but they probably deserve it. They are 32 and 0 entering this year's dance, and they've had a pretty tough road to get there as well. So I want to ask you, Justin, does that number properly reflect the gap between South Carolina and the field? Or is there some consideration on your your end to potentially bet in the field at plus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough question because I think South Carolina is by far the best team in college basketball this year. They beat a lot of good teams in non-conference. They beat UConn, Utah, Notre Dame. Um, but that number is just – I mean, it's a 68-team field. I, I think there's some other really good teams in it. Um, it's hard to bet a team at minus 145 um, in such a talented, chaotic field, even though I think they probably win the tournament. Right. And probably to me means they have the best odds to do so. But in order to get to minus 145, you're talking almost 60% implied odds for them to do so. There's a big gap between they probably win and they're 60% likely to do so. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at here. Yeah. And, and we have um, our Her, Her Hoop Stats founder ran a um, 10,000 tournament simulation and they win 40% of the time there. Um, right. So 60% of the time in that, someone else is winning. Um, so, I mean, I think that kind of shows that like, yeah, they should be the favorite, but I don't think it should be to this level odds wise. So 60% for someone else to win. You got the, the number here at plus 115. That would imply there's some value in the field. Now, obviously, Justin, that's scary to do because that means you are betting against South Carolina and they're really good. They're up there for a reason. So do you consider the plus 115 for the field to topple South Carolina this year? I do, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, of the two, of those two numbers, that's the one I slightly feel more confident with. Like I said, it's a scary proposition to bet against them, but hey, value is value. Sometimes you got to grit your teeth and kind of see what happens there. Okay, so we're looking at the field of plus 115, but Justin, I also do want to ask you, we got a lot of other markets here, and if we think that South Carolina might be a tad bit overvalued, are you finding value elsewhere on the board at FanDuel as an individual team you'd want to consider rather than taking that field bet at plus 115? I love USC at plus 3,000. Um I think they have a relatively easy side of the bracket to get to the final four. And then once you're in the final four, I mean, anything can happen there. Um, I mean, the, the toughest team they have in their bracket is probably UConn, but I think we'll talk about UConn a little bit. And I have some reservations there um, with the Huskies. So I think, I think that USC number is really enticing. Yeah, UConn, the three seed in that region, but they're actually the team most likely to go to the Final Four in the region. We'll talk about that region, that region more in depth later on, but USC 30-1 to 1 to win it all right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Why do you think that number for USC is so long, other than the fact that South Carolina absorbs a lot of helium, they've got UConn in the region? What do you think pushes the odds out so long in USC, and why do you think that's not correct? You know, I'm not really sure. They're the one seed in that region. They beat Stanford in the Pac-12 title game. I mean, I think maybe part of it is that without that win over Stanford, they aren't a one seed. So I mm -hmm. think maybe there's some inflation there of like on the seeding line. Um, I mean, they're also kind of a new face here. Um, you know, they haven't really been this good until the last couple of years. Their best player is a freshman. I can see why, you know, they're not one of the top favorites but i think it's they're a really talented team juju watkins might be as a, she's at least a top five player in the country as a freshman i just think there's a lot to like about this trojans team and i think a lot of value in them Okay, USC 30 to 1, led by Juju Watkins, as you mentioned, potentially the next superstar across women's basketball. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot about her name as this tournament goes along. And there are a lot of superstar names across this entire field. Uh, and we'll talk about plenty of them, but potentially some value in USC at 30 to 1, led by Juju Watkins there. Let's talk about some individual regions now, Justin, and talk about some final four odds there. And let's start things off with the buzziest region which of course is going to be the South and the South is where we got Caitlin Clark at Iowa, but they've got to go through LSU other tough teams in this region as well. So right now, Iowa, despite that tough road plus plus one fifteen to reach the final four LSU plus one fifty five right now, is there value in Iowa or is the path too tough? Do you want to go to anyone else here? What's your view of this very difficult South region? I think the path's a little too tough for Iowa. Um, it's just a nightmare region for them. I think, um, 
because one of their biggest weaknesses is defending inside. They're like right around division one average at opponent rim percent rim field goal percentage. And in this region, the four seed is Kansas State, which has Aoka Lee, who's one of the best bigs in the country. Then you have, you know, whoever wins out of LSU, UCLA, you're facing an elite big there in either Lauren Betts from UCLA or um, Angel Reese from LSU. I think they match up kind of poorly with those teams. And I, I still think they have a good shot of coming out of it, but I don't think it's to a level where they should have the number two odds to reach the final four. Right. Right now, uh, their plus 115 is mentioned, and it just sounds like it's mostly due to matchups. Now, let's say they were in a tougher region, but the matchups specifically weren't as difficult with uh, with the way that they match up with Iowa defensively. Is it those specific matchups and the way those two teams kind of mesh with where Iowa is weakest defensively that leads you to think that there might not be value in Iowa here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, LSU, I mean, we saw last year that um, the Tigers are a bad matchup there um, for Iowa. Um, I just think, I mean, Caitlin Clark can, can do anything, right? Sure. She can she can score 45 points and right. lead Iowa to these wins against these great teams. But I just think the matchups are tough in this region. It's just not, it's, it's, and they're also just so close. I think the top three teams are all, you know, viable final four contenders kansas state if they had their best player healthy all year aoka lee missed some time i think if they might have a three seed resume too it's just it, it doesn't really you know work perfectly for the hawkeyes right so plus 115 too short for iowa are there other teams you would consider in this south region or is it a stay away for you i mean i think i'd mostly stay away i mean i, I might throw a little down at kansas state plus 2100 just because sure. like i think they're closer to those teams than one might expect um and if they you know get past iowa i think they do match up well because they have the size to compete against lsu or ucla um you know i think it's i mean it, it's it's a good long shot bet there i think um not one that i necessarily anticipate being right on but you know Sometimes you have to do that. I know. 21, 21 to 1, though, is is decent odds there in Kansas State if you think that they can contend with all the helium in this this region belonging to Iowa and LSU. Potentially, Kansas State can slip in there. UCLA, of course, getting buzz as well. But Kansas State sounds like they're a pretty dangerous team, too. Let's talk about the Midwest. You mentioned USC as the one seed here, but they do have UConn, and UConn's the three seed. So UConn is actually the the shortest odds to make the Final Four from this region. We actually have seen some movement against them, though. UConn is lengthened to plus 170. USC is plus 250. Now, you like USC to potentially be a long shot to win the tournament. What are your thoughts on them when we look at just the Midwest specifically? Um, I, I, th I think, to me, USC is my favorite to come out of this region because I have reservations about UConn. Um, the metrics love the huskies they're number two in the net um they just overall they're third in net rating this season but they a lot of that's because they ran through the big east and dominated the big east they lost by double digits to south carolina notre dame texas ucla and nc state um when they faced those tough non-conference opponents they lost fairly handily right i think every one of those is by at least 11 points um that gives me a lot of this reservation about thinking yukon as a three seed can get out of this region and you were talking about the big east was that competition kind of i, I don't want to like downplay an entire conference but do you think that that conference may be overselling the quality of yukon based on what they did against those other teams i, th I think a little bit i mean i think the big east is a solid conference i mean it's yeah it's right there in that kind of conversation for like fifth sixth best conference in the country um but i don't know i mean when they face non-conference opponents they were exposed a little so i do think the big east kind of propped up some of those numbers for them now, what do you think led to those blowouts? Because one blowout is one thing. Like, I mean, on the men's side, UConn got blown up by Creighton. That can happen for sure. But with the women's team for UConn, it was consistent when they faced those tougher teams. When you think back to those games, 
can you think of any like you know backwards diagnosis for what happened to lead to that or, or you know is it just kind of like maybe they're not on that same tier as those teams I, th- I think it's just not necessarily being on that same tier. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think Azzy Fudd missed all but two games this season, and I think with her healthy, they are on that tier, but they're just missing that extra kind of spark on offense. Um, they have Paige Beckers and Aaliyah Edwards, who are great players, but you know, you need that kind of third star, I think, and their third star isn't healthy and it's it's i think that's a big part of why when they face these really good teams they just couldn't keep up well Paige is minnesotan i am minnesotan <laughs> therefore i'm legally obligated to root for uconn um so i will root for them from that perspective but i think the usc play is where i want to go with here so i can at least root for uconn emotionally <laughs> while financially rooting for usc and kind of hedge my bets in that way as well Let's talk about the West, Justin, because there's really no clear-cut favorite here right now. Uh, Stanford is at plus 180. Texas is shortening a bit. They were plus 180, now plus 165. So there's some interest in Texas, it seems. Then you get to NC State lurking a little bit longer. You know, no clear-cut favorite here. So what's your view of the West overall? Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably, I think, for me, the toughest um, region to predict. Um just because Texas and Stanford are so close. Um, both are um, really talented basketball teams that won a lot of games. They both, both are good on offense, good on defense. Um, they both have one kind of big star player for Texas. It's freshman Madison Booker. For Stanford, it's Cameron Brink. Um, I just feel like that's such a toss-up between those two teams that I don't know if I'm even going, I don't think I'm going to bet either of them to make the final four just because right. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, I think either one could have been a one seed or a two seed there. There, I think they're the, the, the kind of fourth and fifth teams there. It, it's close. It's tough. I don't, I don't know. And it, and it sounds like the tough part is too, is you can't really separate between those two, but it also, it sounds like Texas and Stanford are both strong enough where you're not even, inclined to take a long shot or a longer shot at NC State. It sounds like it's just that these two teams are really good and they have to be very evenly matched, which makes it kind of lean towards just ignoring this region entirely until we get later in the dance. Yeah, I mean, I like NC State, but I don't think they necessarily match up that well. The four seed there is Gonzaga, which had a great year, but I, I it's tough to bet like a West Coast Conference team sure. in a tournament that's been so dominated historically by power conference teams. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's one that I'm just not super confident with. And that's the luxury of betting, Justin. You never have to bet what you don't want to. So you can just sit back. You can enjoy the games and let the Texas and Sanford battle uh, be the way to to get the enjoyment there. But it's good to get your read on these conferences because I got to fill out my bracket now. Uh, but I was waiting until I talked to you to do so because I wanted to get your insights first before I did so. Now I feel a little bit more informed as I fill out my women's bracket. That is Justin Carter. Make sure you check out his work on Twitter at Just Cards. Find him at Her Hoop Stats. Uh, mentioned the simulations over there. Uh, Roto Bar as well. For for a full breakdown of the women's field for this year. Justin, I appreciate the time. Good luck to you with your bracket, uh, but also just thanks for swinging by for today and enjoy the basketball you're going to see the next couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I can't wait to watch some hoops. Same here. I am very excited for sure. Uh, and it should be a fun tournament as well. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. And make sure you subscribe to the show uh, covering the spread for the Wednesday or the Thursday and Friday breakdowns coming up later on this week. You can also find the show on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Good luck with your women's brackets and enjoy the basketball. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's games. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 